was 2021 the greatest year ever for the Pokemon TCG? Let's talk about it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Gym Leaders Podcast, where we talk all things Pokemon TCG. I'm Travis with TCG Funhouse. And I'm ASX with ASX TCG, ready to talk about the 2021 Pokemon season. I guess it's it's uh, it's been an exciting one. It really has. It's been a year, you know, that's really been unlike any other Featuring both massive spikes in value and prices, while also basically coming back down to earth very, relatively quickly mm-hmm. in the same 12 months, uh, which is insane. Uh, as we get into the video here, guys, I'm going to drop a disclaimer for you. I might have some sniffles, so bear with me. I'm a little bit under the weather, but I'm I'm going to pull together today, you know, and just give you guys all that I have because that's what I do, man. That's what I do. So please ignore my sniffles. Um, but yeah, guys, so 2021, uh, uh, really it's a year that started with shining fates and has finished off with fusion strike and all the sets in between. We're going to touch every single one today briefly, talk about what we think was important in 2021 and maybe what could be, you know, detrimental to maybe not being the best year ever. So, uh, but before we start getting into details, ASX, you know, what has been your experience this year in the Pokemon TCG? Ooh, well, you know, starting off, uh, you know, with, with Shining Fates, it was it was a bit rough. You know, everybody was super, you know, super, super hyped about that set. Um, you know, but as we got, you know, uh, more and more sets out this year, um, you know, I think it got uh, I think it got better for the collector all around. Um, just so many great sets this year, and uh, I'm I'm really excited to uh, you know talk about talk about them today, and you know let you guys know what my favorite parts about them are and everything. Yeah, it's gonna be a really good conversation. I know that you came back right around like Rebel Clash time. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, like Rebel Clash, Darkness Ablaze. Um, so came right back into that Charizard Vmax uh, hunt. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna get back into Pokemon because you know Charizard. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, which we hear all the time. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to be doing that today. A lot of fun. I got back in right around Unified Mind, so uh, late 2019-ish. So I was able to experience all of 2020 and 2021. And to start off, 2021 was actually really like the peak of Pokemon TCG scalping, where oh. McDonald's released their promo. So on February 9th, 2021... The first new, quote-unquote, new set release, right, for the Pokemon TCG was the McDonald's promo set that came out featuring the 25th anniversary stamp. It was the first time that Pokemon had put anything 25th anniversary related on a Pokemon TCG product. And the horror stories that were on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter and all over the place, like the national news even, I'm pretty sure, was covering the McDonald's shortage of Pokemon cards, Pokemon products, like the promos. People were going to, you know, individual restaurants and buying their entire box of promo cards. Or when they were denied that, buying, what, hundreds of Happy Meals to get the promo cards? Like, insane. So much food wasted. So many content creators come, came under fire for doing stupid things. What do you remember about the McDonald's? Uh, I would call it a fiasco, but the McDonald's release. Uh, it's just that it was a complete fiasco um, because you know, like you said, it we first like set I guess that we got in 2021. Uh, everybody was super hyped about it, and you know, all the McDonald's around me. I know there were lines, you know, out the parking lot basically. Of, yes. you know, people just trying to get these cards. And, you know, I, I personally, you know, felt like they were, you know, more of just like a hype thing. I was kind of saving my money for Shining Fates and all <laughs> that. So, you know, I didn't, you know, really buy into all that craze and all that hype. And I'm glad I didn't. That's what it was. Um, you know? That's what it was. It was yeah. it was hype beasts, bro. Completely. It was all these people trying to say, oh, my gosh, McDonald's 25th anniversary. I'm going to buy them all out. And I'm going to sell them for thousands of dollars down the road. And it's malarkey. It was malarkey the whole oh, time. Oh, yeah. 
So completely, completely. Yeah. You know, you're talking about those guys that, you know, went out and bought the whole box of, uh, of cards and you know, those, those boxes of cards are still sitting on eBay, not sold. Yep. Uh, yep. and the price, Worthless. you know, just keeps going down and down and down and down every single day on those things. Um, I, th- I think the most expensive card with that Pikachu that everybody wanted is like a buck fifty. So if you still want one, go out and grab one for yourself. <laughs> TCG player, you can find one pretty easily. There's probably a hundred of them on there. Um, oh, multiple hundreds, yeah. I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, it was just, it was craziness. I, I couldn't believe, you know, some of the stories I heard. You know, people like, you know, scalpers going out there and just completely. You know, taking that away from kids. I mean, you got them in Happy Meals, right? You it's know, you didn't get them insane. with your Big Mac or anything like it's, it's, that. Ooh. So, hey, you man, know, give me some cards <laughs> in my Big Mac. I'm cool with that. I mean, I would. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it's just, you know, it was sad to hear at the time. But, um, you know, glad you can you know easily get them now if you wanted to. Well, see, and a lot of people didn't realize this. And I talked about it at the time is. Um, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 19, um, and yeah, maybe there was not a McDonald's set in 2020, but McDonald's basically releases a set every single year. Why there was so much hype and so much nonsense around the McDonald's cards in February, 2021, just because what, there was a little Pikachu stamp on the card. I don't know, guys. The whole thing was a disaster. It was insane. Um, but I will say. I did pull a couple of early release French McDonald's cards. One of my most popular videos on the channel when I was a tiny, tiny, tiny channel. Yeah, was, I remember that. It was so cool, man. Um, and yeah, I sold them for like $120 a piece on eBay. Nice. Like before the McDonald's released their stuff. And I was like, what? I'll take that all day. These are like 25 cent <laughs> cards, man. It was crazy. Um, awesome. It was crazy. But so the McDonald's fiasco happened and then... We continued with the peak scalping, the peak make a quick, uh, get rich quick schemes with Shining Fates release, which I still think is a phenomenal set. Is it Hidden Fates? No, but Shining Fates was a very, very good set. When Shining Fates released, I was doing consec- I, was, I was doing consistent live streams on YouTube for shiny hunting, right? Really small channel. I think it was averaging like, I don't know, like like 14 or 15 viewers. Like it was just fun. I was connecting with some people. You know, I had a lot of uh, support, really tight, uh, tight knit group. It was a lot of fun. Um, but we used to talk about Shiny Fates all the time before release. Sh- you know, the Shiny Charizard craziness that happened. We just had the Champion's Path Shiny Charizard. So we were getting this other Shiny Charizard and all these Shiny Pokemon. And people were calling it Hidden Fates 2.0 and, you know, speculation of what the set name was going to be. Then I believe for an entire stream, we made fun of the name Shining Fates because it was <laughs> such a bad name. Yep. Brings back so much memories, you know, so much nostalgia there. It's just, it was, it was so fun. But then we finally get the Shining Fates release and it really was a fun set to open. Um, and, you know, it took us a very, very long time to pull that Shining Charizard, which really upset me, you know. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock it off a couple of points for that, you know, considering we <laughs> got the Shiny Charizard from Champion's Path in our very first opening for it, which wow. that was awesome. Shiny Fates took us like forever. Like it, you know, I think we just pulled it in like October or something off camera. So shame on you, Shining Fates. But um, what do you remember in particular about the Shining Fates release? And do you think it was good for Pokemon, bad for Pokemon? How do you think it worked out? Yeah, no, I, I mean, ultimately, I think it was good. Um, this, the scalpers are what made it bad. I really think uh, you know, so bad, man. Uh, we, yeah, you know, we've said this before uh, on the podcast here. You know, anytime they have the opportunity to make money, the Pokemon company, they do it, and it's as easy as putting a Charizard in the set for them. Um, you know, yep. so as soon as scalpers knew that, you know, the <laughs> shiny Charizard V max looking all, you know, super awesome and everything, uh, you know, it just got scalped into the ground for sure. But, um, you know, it, it was one of those sets where, you know, I think they were really planning on printing a whole bunch of it. Um, you know, as you can see now, you can find a lot of it in stores, you know, they got a whole bunch of Pikachu V boxes and stuff, you know, out on the shelves. Now I think you can pretty much find the ETBs, maybe even on the Pokemon Center for, mm-hmm. you know, for MSRP now. So, you know, I, I think it's one of those sets that got, uh, you know, better as it got more available. But you're right. It was it was hard to pull that Charizard. It took me a while as well, um, you know, but ended up, uh, you know, pulling it out of a random ETB that I almost didn't pick up. It was one of those situations where I was like sitting there looking at, you know, all the products and everything. And uh, it was going back and forth and almost didn't pick up that ETB. I'm super glad that I did. 
uh, because yeah, it's an <laughs> awesome set. You know, with all those shiny Pokemon and everything, um, you know, it's just absolutely amazing. I think a lot of us were hoping that it was going to be uh, Hidden Fates 2.0, uh, but I mean, you just, in my opinion, you can't beat all those Kanto Pokemon that that Hidden Fates had. I agree. Um, you know, and I, I just, I. You know, looking at the cards and everything, I, I think I do kind of actually like the Hidden Fates design of the shiny Pokemon a so little bit I. better, too. Yeah. Um, but overall, I you know, it, it was an absolutely fun set to open. I mean, who doesn't love, you know, opening shiny up a pack and a shiny Pokemon? Let's go. Exactly. exactly. Shiny full so arts. Even the, you know, even the baby uh, Pokemon, too, shiny baby Pokemon. You know, it's just it's yep. so fun, you know, to get those types of polls. And, you know, it's one of those sets that you can get like a, a double banger pack. I always call it on my channel. Yes. Uh, double bangers, you know, bro. Yeah, I love when yeah, Pokemon so, does that. Love it. Oh my god, it's just so so fulfilling when you get a pack with the double banger in it. You know, if you just had a dud pack before it, you know, you Most got that likely. double banger pack and you feel, you know, like it. Uh, it kind of made up for made it up for it, right? Bit, so, but so. like most likely, we're going to be getting double banger packs in Brilliant Star too, because if you remember, oh yeah, the character rares in Cosmic Eclipse came in the reverse hollow slot. They didn't come in the rare yeah. slot, so I expect that to happen again in Brilliant Star, coming as the first yeah. set in 2022. Which make sure you guys stay tuned here on the channel or here on the uh, Spotify, iTunes, and Google podcast, where you know we're going to be talking about what we expect for next year to come. So that will be next week's episode. So make sure you guys drop a sub, hit the notification bell here, or drop a follow on one of those audio platforms so you don't miss that because it's going to be a really awesome conversation as well. Um, but let's go ahead and move forward here. Shining Fates, probably one of the better sets of the year for sure. And I think it still is in the major buy spot right now on both sealed product and singles. I think they're going to be great sets for long-term hold. Um, Battle Styles, probably the worst set of 2021 is Battle Styles. Um, there was a lot of hoopla up around it with all this rapid strike and single strike stuff coming. The mechanics of the TCG game changing. On top of that, there really wasn't many anchor Pokemon in this set. You got the Tyranitar, uh, Sleepy Tyranitar, which, by the way, this set did introduce the alternate arts. A lot of people forget that. Um, yeah. because Chilling Rain had so many more alternate arts than Battle Styles did. A lot of people forget that Battle Styles really was the first set that said, hey, we're going to steer away from the amazing rares, and we're going to start giving you alternate art cards. Um, and I think the success of the Urshifu alternate arts and the Titar alternate arts at the time really made them feel good about their decisions moving forward for the alternate arts and Evolving Skies, Chilling Rain, and Fusion Strike, which we'll be talking about later. But overall, Battle Styles booster boxes, I think, are going like market price like $82, $85 right now, which yeah. the last time boxes were going for that cheap was really like late X and Y era with like Breakpoint and Fates Collide. That was the last time you were really able to pick up booster boxes for like $80, $85, and it looks like we're back there with Battle Styles. Um, what was your experience with battle styles? Yeah. So, I mean, I actually like battle styles, um, that quite a bit actually, but mainly because I play now, the Pokemon. I was going to say now, do you like it for the Pokemon gameplay? Yeah. Are you, do you like what single strike and rapid strike did? Or are you like, yeah. man, these cards are just amazing. I want all of the Urshifus in my set. <laughs> yeah. Not, uh, for a collection, um, side of things, definitely more for playing, uh, yeah, because I really liked how, you know, the single strike and the rapid strike really changed, really changed the gameplay and, how, you know, how people play the types of decks that people played. Um, you know, I, I just thought it was really interesting how they did that. And, you know, I think it made a it really made a difference, um, you know, in the online gameplay. So I enjoyed it a lot for that. Um, but also for the the alternate arts as well. I, you know, I really did like the amazing rares that we got, you know, Vivid Voltage and Shining Fates. Um, and I, at the time I hoped, you know, they, they were going to continue those, but you know, once I saw that they were going the alternate art route, I mean, my mind kind of completely changed on that and was like, all right, these alternate art cards are really, really cool. Um, like that is something, you they know, are. that's, that's really collectible to me. Um, you know, so I really, you know, hopped on board and I, I really actually enjoyed opening up battle styles. I didn't open up a crazy amount of it. Um, but the, the, you know, products that I did open actually were pretty decent. 
I yeah. got a lot of decent hits. They're definitely throwing battle styles around and <coughs> still, excuse me, see, I warned you guys. <laughs> um, still to this day, in a lot of the collection boxes and in the ETBs for celebrations and all those stuff, we're still getting battle styles packs. So the set is still very prevalent. Um, the Unfortunately, the Sleepy Titar and the Urshifus have come down significantly in price, almost like cut in half over the past month. So if you like those cards, go pick them up. You know, they're they're struggling to gain value and they're way down there. So uh, decent buys right now with those prices. But, you know, overall, not my favorite set. Probably my least favorite set. Um, and if it's better than anything, it's going to be the next set we're going to talk about, which is Chilling Rain. So Chilling Rain came out right after Battle Styles on June 18th, which is also, which we're going to talk about here in a second when... Um, all the hoopla, I believe, around like Logan Paul really started to get crazy as well. Um, yeah. And a lot of the uh, the media coverage of Logan Paul and Pokemon started happening. And if I'm wrong, please comment below if it started happening before that. But Chilling Rain, a um, lot of high hopes for this set. This is the first set where they really started to just make like a massive set. Right, like it was absolutely yeah. huge. It was 233 cards after secret rares. So many secret rares in this set. They gave us tons of alternate arts, um, including all the Glarian birds. I remember this set for the Glarian birds, even though the Blaziken yeah. is technically the most expensive card. Um, the three Glarian birds were a lot of people's chases. Um, for this set in particular, a lot of mythical and legendary Pokemon in this set, Zeraora, Celebi, Volcanion, um, which was really, really cool. And then, you know, you had to cap it off with some of the weird Pokemon, like a, like a Lipard, full, like really, do I, do, do I need Lipard? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but another set that, and I will tell you why this may be my least favorite set of 2021, even over Battle Styles, and that's this set was such an a-hole to me in terms of pull rates. It took me 240 packs Ooh. to get my first alternate art card, which, and it wasn't even a good one. It was Shadow Rider V, not even like the VMAX Shadow Rider V alternate art, which is like a $26 card when I pulled it anyway. It's probably even less now. Um, but it took me 240 packs to pull my first alternate art from this set which is never should happen is nobody's luck should ever be that bad that's like a whole nother level of bad luck right there so shame on you chilling rain <laughs> um lately it's been treating us fairly well logan has pulled very very well from this set um but if you ask me right now i've probably opened close to 400 packs of chilling rain still none of the glaring bird alternate arts Blaziken alternate art, no. So there's so many chase cards out there that I have not pulled, which this could be a conversation that we're going to talk about at the end of the video, where pull rates lately, starting with Chilling Rain, have been very, very bad because printing has been increased so significantly. So we're going to talk about that at the end of the video as well. But before we get there, what did you feel about Chilling Rain? Yeah, so I was super hyped about this set when it came out, um, primarily because I knew so many alt arts were coming into the set. Um, so really, really yep. excited about that. Um, the My chase card, which I still have not pulled, is that super cool Galarian Moltres V uh, alt art. Um, would absolutely love to pull it, but I, I, I cannot. Um, it's definitely <laughs> turned into more of, uh, you know, as people say, chilling pain. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, Chilling pain. recently I Love it. I gotta say I did just pull the the um, Glaring Zapdos V Alt Art, which is a super awesome card. Really happy with it, but it's not that Moltres uh, that I really really want. That was my chase card um, too. One of that. So yeah, bad. it just looks so cool, so cool. But uh, overall, I think I mean I think it's a really good set. Um, the, the Alt Arts are absolutely beautiful, but yeah, it's it's one of those where it it got really tough to to get some pulls. Um, it started off really nice for me. Um, I got to say, I uh, I bought a booster box from you and pulled an alt art uh, really early on. So sorry I bought that from you and you didn't open it. Which one did you it. get? Which one did you get? Um, uh, my first one was the Galarian Rapidash V alt art. Oh, that's, a, that's an awesome card. We did end yeah. up actually getting that one. So I'm not too salty about it. Okay. Not too salty. That was that was back in my selling days before my distributor pulled out the you know pulled the rug out from under me when he was actually giving me product. 
Um, and I just looked it up real quick. You guys can hear my mechanical keyboard over there, so sorry about that. <laughs> but the reason why Logan Paul in June sticks out to me is that's when he fought Floyd Mayweather and he had and he wore it uh. around his neck. So that that's when that all popped off and Pokemon was like mainstream after that for a little bit. Um, it would have been a few months before that when he was doing his Shadowless First Edition um, box breaks and he bought that ch- that card from Gary. Um, so so yeah, like pretty 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 cool to think how mainstream Pokemon has gotten um, yeah. in 2021 simply because of a couple of influencers uh, and stuff like that. Um, big names, you know, before we move on to the sets, big names coming in the Pokemon, like Steve Aoki is massively involved in Pokemon now. Yeah. Um, Logan Paul, obviously I know guys like logic, the rapper, um, opened up some Pokemon cards and a few streams and stuff like that as well. Um, even like, you know, there's a lot of it. (laughs) There's a lot of it going on. Uh, conventions have gotten significantly more popular. Collecticon, Collecticon was really, really cool. Uh, we got our first invite, TCG Funhouse, to be guests at a Collecticon and a convention and stuff like that, which was phenomenal. Uh, big shout out to you guys. You guys are going to, uh, I believe, February's next Collecticon in Orlando. So uh, go check them out for those details. But yeah, mainstream. Pokemon has always been like pseudo mainstream because of the number one selling uh, media franchise. But it's always been kind of like nerd culture mainstream, you know, Japanese mainstream, stuff like that. Uh, but it went like big, big, big time this year. Um, oh, yeah. And Logan Paul just recently did his uh, first edition Shadowless base set booster box break over on the Whatnot app, which I was also selling. Started my business this year, which was exciting. Um, so he still is going strong, still trying to keep Pokemon in the mainstream to make some money. So good stuff there. But let's chug on forward and talk about the best set in my opinion, in 2021, yep. and that is Evolving Skies, which came out after Chilling Rain, and it came out on August 27th, really not that long ago. And this is the set that really took that alternate art and elevated it to the moon by giving us tons of fan-favorite Pokemon, like all of the Evolutions and Rayquaza. Absolutely massive when you linchpin you know, those fan favorite Pokemon with these amazing alternate art cards. So Mm. I'm assuming that if you were excited for Chilling Rain, you're probably doubly or triply. Is that even a word? Doubly, triply? It is today. It works. It is right now. (laughs) Excited for Evolving Skies, which I think is going to go down as one of the all-time great regular Pokemon TCG sets. It's basically on the same Mm. level of and uh, of a subset right with all of these amazing cards to this day i believe there's still like three or four cards that are valued over a hundred dollars which is absolutely insane for a set that's been out for four months um fan favorites such as dragonite gyarados which people don't even talk about those two pokemon being in the set there's a gyarados rainbow rare a dragonite alternate art like normally those two pokemon could themselves be anchors and linchpins for an entire set, and here they are just kind of thrown in as fodder with all the evolutions and the Rayquazas. So, insane. I think Evolving Skies is going to be, and is currently, the best set of 2021. What do you think? Yeah, I have to agree with you. Definitely best set of 2021. Not my favorite set, but uh, definitely, definitely, I gotta say, the best set. Um, absolutely amazing artworks on those evolutions cards and all the other ones as you mentioned you know gyarados and and i think uh i think is the noivern um yeah noivern's in in this set as well just a super cool card like the kind of like batman-esque uh kind of you know alternate art i think that's super awesome um but yeah just a a really amazing set uh i definitely got super excited for it uh when i saw what kinds of cards were going to be in there and um you know definitely uh opened up a fair amount of it um, it's, uh, one of those sets though, that is, is definitely being printed a lot. And I think the, the pull rates are getting tougher and tougher for sure. Dude, it's uh, such know, a hard set to pull from as now. Doors open. Yeah. I had yeah. no problem. I had no problem getting hits from right. the set when, it, when Evolving Skies first came out. We pulled, Me too. uh, we pulled the Umbreon alternate art, the Umbreon VMAX alternate art. We pulled nice. the Sylveon VMAX alternate art. We had no problems getting hits from this set, but like lately all the Evolving Skies that's coming in, 
you know, the celebrations boxes or the yeah. reunion boxes or anything else that you're unboxing, even the new ETBs that are arriving at your stores, trash pulls, man. Yeah. Trash pulls. And that's something that really seems to be continuing, right? Like these really tough, yeah. hard pull rates, really from like second wave and beyond, right? So if you're a sealed collector and an unboxer, somebody who opens packs and has sealed collection, there's no reason why you're not unboxing everything you get in your first wave and you're keeping yeah. everything from your second and third wave sealed. People yep. aren't going to be serial number barcode hunting to find out if it was first wave or second wave down the road. They don't care. I mean, they might care, but I don't think it's going to come up. And just the hit rates being so significantly diminished as waves go on. It's yeah. insane. Even sets like Hidden Fates have, have done that. Like all the newer Hidden Fates oh, yeah. stuff that has come out, the, hit, the the pull rates were far less, which is why like those Mewtwo and Mew three-pack collections, like they go for more than oh, yeah. the four-pack Walmart boxes or the four-pack tens, even though there's one less pack inside because the pull rates were that much better in those, those two boxes, the Mew and Mewtwo small box, only got printed in the first wave. They didn't get a second, third, or fourth wave like the other product did. So when you see one of those small boxes, you know it's a part of the first wave, which is crazy. Um, so there's some history for you. But <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about the set that I'm assuming that you're talking about when you say it's not my favorite set so far, no, even though yeah. even though I you know I think Evolving Skies can push this. I really do. Celebrations, Pokemon's official 25th anniversary set came out on October 8th, 2021, featuring 17,000 Pikachus and one Charizard base set reprint, which is basically yes. everything that's inside. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it feels like every time you open it. It really is. It really is. Um, and then every other pack has a Zacian or Zamazin to be in it as well. Um, yes. But this is probably... Right there with Hidden Fates as some of the most fun packs to open. It's very strange. It, they went Detective Pikachu-esque by giving us booster packs with only four cards per pack. Significantly different than pretty much anything else that we've had, minus Detective Pikachu before. And these packs are just littered with hits. If you get an ETB that has, that has what, 10 Celebrations packs inside, guaranteed... Eight or nine of those packs are either going to have, you know, an, uh, a V from the regular collection or a classic collection hit. So, I mean, you're looking at an 80% pull rate on these booster packs, which is absolutely insane. Now, it has diminished the price of these singles significantly because of that. But this is, this is a collector set. This is... Yeah. For opening, it's a collector set, it's a fan set, but I also think it's going to be extraordinarily popular set to keep sealed as well. So was I was I correct in thinking that this is your favorite set of twenty twenty one? Uh yeah, you're definitely correct. Yeah. Boom. I mean, you hit the nail on the head uh with with you know exactly why. I mean, this is just an absolutely fun set. I've said it before here, you know, on the podcast. It's just an abs it's a celebration every time you open it. Uh, because of all the hits that you can get. I mean, I think they really knocked it out of the park. Uh, and, and, you know, with celebrations, the time that they brought it in and everything, I think was perfect timing. Uh, you know, it got us all hyped up again. You know, being able to pull that, you know, that base set Charizard reprint, uh, which, you know, if, if you've heard, if you've watched my channel, I pulled a couple of them. Um, but, uh, you know, you pulled two on my live stream in five packs. <laughs> I'm going to keep I, talking know, about happened. it. I'm going to keep talking about it. That was probably the most epic thing that happened that on awesome. my channel this year was in back-to-back -back booster packs pulling you base set Charizard reprints. Insane. Yeah, that that was that I that had me jumping off my couch. My, you know, I was exactly that emoji with the head exploding. Uh <laughs> like it was it was absolutely crazy. Um, you know, but yeah, it's it's by far my favorite set of the year just because of how fun it is to open. Uh, you know, that's, yeah. that's, you, know, you, you say it on your channel all the time, you know, we're here to have fun. Like that's the main thing. Uh, and that's what it's always been for me. Uh, you know, with, with, when it comes to opening up Pokemon cards and when you can give me a set like that, that is just like, you know, fun every yeah. single pack that you open. Uh, you know, I, I can't complain. I mean, it's, I, it's I still just pick it up when I see set. it at the store. 
I still oh, pick yeah. it up. I still like when I when I walk into my Target and there's a Pikachu reunion box in there. I'm like, okay, I'll buy it, <laughs> and exactly, I'm gonna go home yeah. and I'm gonna open it because it's such a fun set to open. So right, right. It's, Very rarely can you be disappointed by celebrations. I gotta true. say, I have had a box that I was like, uh, oh, those pulls weren't that great. But I was struggling with the Walmart the next tins. box is absolute fire. The silver <laughs> tins, those have been the worst for me. Um, yeah, you know, I, I only twice. got one of those uh, on you? that like Black Friday or Cyber Monday deal. Yeah, uh, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. Yeah. I think I got like a, a Zapdos and like a birthday Pikachu and then nice. like, you know, 15 other Pikachus as well. Nice. All right. So let's finish off today um, with the last set that just came out. And that's Fusion Strike on November 12th. And so, yeah, so we're going from November 12th Fusion Strike all the way to February 25th on Brilliant Star. So we are letting Celebrations and Fusion Strike marinate as they were released pretty close to each other here. Um, I actually think Fusion Strike is going to end up being an extraordinarily underrated set when it's all said and done down the road. Like, I really do. Yeah. I think that Fusion Strike being anchored by fan favorite Pokemon like Mew and Gengar, plus getting that notoriously missing Sylveon VMAX alternate art as well, give you three amazing alternate art cards that are still... Price ranging right around $100, very similar to Evolving Skies. Um, but then it also has my favorite Pokemon of all time in it, Chandelure, with a Chandelure V and a Chandelure V Max. So I'm excited that Chandelure is getting some love here. Um, you know, because I just, I want all of them. I want that rainbow Chandelure. I still haven't pulled it, so I'm upset about that. Oh, man. Um, but the a lot of people loved the Genesect artwork, the Celebi V artwork. So... There's a lot of really, really good cards in this set that I think this set gets a bad rap because it came after Celebration so quickly. Yeah. And now, with all the stuff that we have basically been announced, like 30 different character rares coming inside of Brilliant Star, plus a new type of rarity with the V-Star cards, Fusion Strike is just going to get left in the dust and people aren't really going to get too hype about it at the end of the day, which is unfortunate. So uh, real quick, because we're pressed on time here, what was your synopsis of Fusion Strike? Yeah, I definitely think Fusion Strike kind of has that, um, you know, mil middle child syndrome kind of thing. Yeah, oh, that's know, a good it got, point. It got overlooked, uh, you good know, point. with the awesomeness of celebrations and just what we're hearing about brilliant star. It just got sandwiched in the wrong spot, I think. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, the, the set, it, it's definitely a set that's grown on me. Um, I'm really liking a lot of the artworks in there. Mm -hmm. uh, not as many alternate arts, you know, as we got, um, you know, in chilling rain and evolving skies, but, yep. uh, you know, definitely. Some and yet fan it still favorites. had more cards in the whole set. Don't yeah, that yeah, happened. that that's another thing too. Um, it, oh, it just, well, just real quick, so real quick. Cards. Why the heck? Why the heck is there so many cards with multiple? Like, why is there two different Centiscorches and Fusion Strike? Why, well, you yeah. know, there's like six or seven Pokemon that got two different artworks that were like both uncommons, or one was a common and one was an uncommon, or like, yeah. like why? Why, why would you? I don't know. There's several other instances in Fusion Strike of that happening, and I, I just don't get it. I don't understand why. It drives me nuts. Yeah, there was there was a um, you know a, I, I can't. There's figure two out why Score Bunny V either. or Cinderace V's, isn't there? Isn't there yeah. like two different uh, Vulpix? Is another one. Why is there two different Vulpixes and two different and Nine Tails? Just leave two of them out. Like they're not. They're not ultra rares. They're not even holographics. Just leave them out. Right. We don't need two Vulpixes and two Ninetales. Like, come on. They got to yeah, do that better was, on that. That was that. weird. They, they've done that kind of throughout the year, you know, but it's usually yeah, only but... like one or two cards maybe in a set, mm -hmm. um, you know, or maybe like I think the, you know, Galarian starters or something like back in Rebel Clash or something. I think they might have had two cards and, and some V cards or something. But, yeah, it's yeah. very strange with Fusion Strike. Another thing I found with Fusion Strike as well, and, and I don't know, let me know in the comments down below if you guys have experienced this as well. Um, but I, I find like if I open up a product that's like, a, you know, like an ETB or something where, you know, there's. Yeah, a decent amount of fusion strike packs. I feel like I get some packs that are like almost the exact same. Like the commons yeah. and uncommons are the no. exact same. Like two two or three packs in a row. It's very strange. So <laughs> very I weird. found that to be new factories, man. Those new factories yeah. are letting us down for sure. Um, all right. So uh, I do right before we get out of here, uh, I want to go ahead. I want to get your formal grade for the year. And I want you to rank your sets, right? So I'll give you 
uh, mine here real fast. So the best yeah. set at the end of the day, the best set in 2021 is going to be in Celebrations. I tried not to do it, but it has it has to be. Um, my second favorite set, Evolving Skies, then Shining Fates, Fusion Strike, Chilling Rain, and then Battle Styles at the very, very end. That's my ranking. And ultimately, do I think this was the best year ever for Pokemon TCG? No, that's got to be 1999 when Base Set came out. Um, I, I do believe Jungle and Fossil came out in 1999 as well. Just so much nostalgia, so many memories based around that year. The introduction of Pokemon for a lot of people. Um, I do think 2020 is also a very, very good year uh, with some amazing sets inside like Champion's Path. I do believe Cosmic Eclipse was part of 2020 as well. Uh, no, that was late 2019. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. So, yeah. So, 2021 was better than 2020. But 2019, yeah. I think, can give it a run for its money with Cosmic Eclipse, Hidden Fates, Unified Minds, and Broken Bonds and stuff like that. Those fantastic sets. Um, but ultimately, I think it was a very, very good year. I would give Pokemon TCG an A-. minus. Um, definitely, a lot of things could change. The new factory printing that happened brings it down a notch. A lot of bad quality cards, uncentered cards, could end up hurting the value of these cards down the road, which is unfortunate. Um, we're getting into massive printing here at the end of 2021, which could cause a lot of these sets to be worth less. But at the same token, there has been massive growth in 2021, where it started in 2020 and kind of grew into this year, which I think helped Pokemon reach heights that it had never reached before. I would officially say that the height of the new Pokemon era was right around February of 2021 was like it's very, yeah. very peak when Shining Fates and McDonald's cards had come out. Um, so we got to see a huge spike and then a huge dip. Very exciting year. Just the volatility makes me drop it down to like A minus instead of like A or A plus. So tag, you're it. Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, ranking my sets here. I got to say celebrations number one uh, for so many reasons. So many Charizards. <laughs> um, and then uh, uh, then I'll go Evolving Skies, Chilling Rain, um, Shining Fates, Fusion Strike, Battle Styles, which Ooh. I think it was pretty similar to your list. Um, yeah, but you had Chilling but, Rain up there. That's probably just because your I, luck I really was like better. I, I do. I, I, I like that set. I do like it a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I would say, you know, overall, was it the best year? No, I'm going to agree with you. It definitely wasn't. Um, I, I like your answer. 99. Yes. Uh, definitely the best year. How can we not? Uh, you know, when, when Pokemon came to the U.S. So I'm, I'm good with that. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think they made a lot of good moves. Um, I, I, say, I would say I'm going to give them a B plus. And uh, okay. I, I think they made a lot of good moves, um, which did start in 2020. Um, you yeah. know, a lot of a lot of good things happened here within the TCG. I think they, you know, did a lot of, uh, you know, fan service with a lot of the alternate arts and the amazing rares and everything like that. Um, but the quality is definitely going to be the thing that brings it down to that B plus level for me because I've yeah. opened so many packs. I opened an entire booster box that the the backs of the cards just whitening all down every single side yep. corners were rough yep. um i think i think it actually was vivid voltage that i opened up so not a set from this year but it was definitely uh you know a set that was that was printed this year it was, it, like could have, it was probably run. printed in 2021 like it was it probably was, the third yeah. wave or something because i think vivid was november of of 2020 so it was the last set mm -hmm. printed in, in 2020 so yeah, yeah, there's there's a good chance that you got some of those printed from 2021. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I I would recommend if you bought a booster box from like that third wave of Vivid Voltage, don't open it. Keep it sealed. Uh, definitely is one you were going to want to keep sealed and send on its merry way down the line. You know, down the line here. But yeah, overall, I would say uh, a strong B plus for sure on uh, on 2021, and I'm super excited for what 2022 is going to bring us. Yes, me as well, and we're going to talk about that all in our next episode of the Gym Leaders Podcast. If you're watching here on YouTube, guys, smash that sub and hit the like for us here. It really helps the channel out. And if you're listening on your audio pl platforms, give us a grade, man. Give us that five stars if you enjoyed the conversation and drop a follow here as well. Spotify, uh, Google Podcast, and Apple Podcast. So I uh, appreciate you guys so much for hanging out with us and listening. And in true Gym Leaders Podcast fashion, ASX. Say one last thing to lead us out. We'll catch you all next year.
Oh, that was so lame. That was so. I know, right? I've heard that from Perfect. everybody at work. How dare you bring that you back? You have to. You have to. <laughs> Later, guys. Oh, <laughs> my